Hello and welcome to Garak Farms. Today we're going to be doing some soil sampling here on my father's dairy farm. I'm going to bring you guys along with me and uh, I'll show you the ins and outs of sampling and how we soil sample here on our farm. Alright, so first I want to show you the tools and the things that we use to soil sample. So here is a soil sample probe and uh, I uh, fabricated it and added on to an existing probe to make it a little bit more usable. So uh, the stainless steel part is the original probe, which is a short, compact, cheap version of a soil probe. I added on to it, did some uh, farmer fabrication. It's not the prettiest, but uh, it makes it more usable and it gets the job done because this is what a standard soil sample probe would look like. It's taller like this, it's not short and stubby. And the reason why is because when you're taking soil samples with something short like this, you'd be bending over all the time. So this is a lot easier. And when it comes to soil sample probes, they also make big soil sampling machines that you mount on the side of a ATV or a UTV. And you can drive around and they're, uh, they use a motor to press into the ground. But those are very expensive. I've only ever seen one used in person and that was in college. So I, I think you'd have to take a lot of soil samples on big flat fields in order for you to get your use out of it and make your money back. A lot of people use a standard soil sampling probe like this. It gets the job done and I think it's just as fast. There's just a little bit more uh, fatigue on the person doing it. You gotta have some kind of pail to throw your uh, sample cores into. So just any normal pail will work. And then you gotta have something to throw your individual samples into. So most uh, sampling companies or labs will have their own bags that they like to use. So typically they'll just give you those for free. Uh, I've also seen where guys will throw it in Ziploc bags if they don't wanna run and get these. Whatever works, just something to throw your samples into. And uh, it's very important to uh, you know, label them, you know, especially like the field you took them out of and the sample number they are. So then when you get your results, then you know what that sample's representing. So there are two very common ways to soil sample a field. One is called grid sampling and the other one is called composite sampling. Uh, grid sampling is probably the most common and it's used on a lot of larger operations that have bigger fields and are, you know, sampling on a regular basis meant for those operations so they can keep going back to that individual point within that field and uh, i'll throw a picture up of what a typical grid sample would look like on a field but it can range anywhere from one acre to five acre grids and then there's composite sampling which is what we're going to do here and that caters to a lot of uh, smaller operations that don't sample on a regular basis or that have fields and terrain like my father has here. He has a lot, of, a lot of hills and a lot of contour strips and a lot of small fields. So a grid sample situation wouldn't work because a point might be on top of a sandy knoll when the next one might be in the middle of a valley somewhere with a lot of nutrients and a lot of heavier soil like a clay or a silt. So it's not a great way to accurately represent the entire field. So what we're going to do is composite sampling, which I'll throw a photo up of what that looks like. But essentially you're taking 10 different probes within that entire field and you're doing almost a zigzag pattern randomly throughout the entire field in order to get an average of the entire field and accurately represent the soil within that field. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys, you know, how to stick a soil sample probe in the ground and what it looks like pulling a core. So you find a spot that isn't covered in manure, you can maybe kick some debris away. And you go in about eight inches. It depends on the soil sampling lab you're taking it to. And then you pull your core out Maybe pick some of that top debris off. You don't want that to throw off your results. Any of that chaff. And you take your pail. And there you go, you pulled uh, one core. So now we gotta take nine more within this field that we're in in order to get an average and do our composite sampling.
right, we collected our uh, our first sample. And as you can see, it's pretty clumpy up in the probe, so kind of mix it up pretty good. And you uh, take your bag. Um, for sure get it above their recommended uh, line on the bag Basically just, uh, just Get them enough uh, soil you Don't have to worry about it when they're testing You get your nice package sample ready to send to the lab All right, let's uh, let's move on to the next couple fields. We got uh, six more to sample for my father so Let's get to work Talk about some black dirt. These uh, these bottom fields that we have have some really rich, heavy soil. And I gotta say, the cover crop looked really good this year. It's uh, it's doing its job. It's uh, greened up really nice, and it's gonna it's gonna hold that soil there over winter. Some of you might be wondering why uh, why take soil samples. What are the what are the benefits? Why would you even want to do it? Well, it allows a farmer or even a landowner to make informed decisions about how to manage their their ground. So the main reason my father is doing it, he's interested to see what his pH is out there. If he uh, if he's going to need some lime or not, because it's been a while since my father's put on some some commercial ag lime. He puts lime on through the manure with his barn lime. And then he also uses some fertilizer products like BioCal that claim to work a lot like conventional lime out of a quarry. So he is interested to see if it's working out the way that it claims to be. Other reasons that a farmer might want to do soil samples to find out how many nutrients he has in the ground and it will help him make a decision when it comes to the amount of fertilizer to buy for the following year and what to put on certain fields and then a lot of bigger dairies use soil samples for their nutrient management plans it's a way for them to work with the state and keep track of the manure they're putting out in the fields so make sure they're not over applying or under applying so there's a lot of great benefits to soil sampling. It's another tool for farmers to be stewards of the land and take care of the soil. Anyways, we're gonna keep working.
Now some of these heavy soils can be a pain sampling due to the soil type being so sticky. You can't get a decent core. So it's nice to have a knife or some kind of, you know, something to shove in the end of the probe to get it cleaned out. But I can tell you for sure I'd rather have sticky black dirt than dry coarse sand. I think we're very very fortunate for our soil types that we have here on my father's farm. All right, so this field we're currently on is one of my father's fields that has been in grassy hay for a long, long, long period of time. And it's a valley, so the bottom has a lot of heavier, rich soil. And then the other part of it is very hilly. It has some sandier soil in it. But I noticed while I was sampling it, the huge difference between just the color alone all right, so this is a really deep core. I'm not gonna add this into the sample. I just wanna use this as a visual tool. So this is the bottom of the, of the valley. Now look at how dark and gray that is. There's a lot of nutrients and a lot of topsoil down here in the center of the valley. And now this core was pulled just, you know, maybe 30 feet away if that and look at the difference between the two this one's a lot sandier a lot more brown doesn't have as much organic matter so that is why it's really important in these these hillier fields not to pull all your samples from the bottom of the valley because they'll throw your your data way off because your soil type isn't the same it's it, it's constantly changing in an environment such as this one all right so we're up on the hill now and uh, some of you might be wondering what time of year are you doing this well there's two good times of year to do it typically early in the spring before the crops are getting planted or before the hay starts growing or in the fall after you've been done harvesting and uh, all the, the hay fields have gone dormant so you're not really going to hurt the crop but you can sample any time of year it just is easiest those times of year another thing i wanted to talk about some of you might be wondering well why are some of the corn fields tilled up and why are some of them in cover crops and not tilled up well we do tillage on anything that is picked and harvested for dry grain because it's too late in the year at that time after harvest to plant a cover crop. It won't establish quick enough and it won't really do anything over the winter. It might start to grow the following spring if the seed goes dormant there, but you're not going to be getting any benefit out of it as for soil maintenance and holding on to your soil over the winter. And then our cover crop fields are fields that we chopped and took off in early September. So there's plenty of time for that cover crop to grow and get established and then go dormant and do what it is intended to do over the winter. So anyway, let's get to work.
All right, so we finished up the last field here. We got the final sample. But anyways, we gotta head back down to the yard. See you guys down there. To the yard all that's left to do is a bit of paperwork i'll throw that up on the screen that will show the desk work that goes on behind the scenes after you get done soil sampling you got to fill out your soil type your slope your crop rotation things like that so the lab can put together an accurate recommendation for that field based off of that sample but anyways i want to thank our camera woman darby she did a wonderful job and i want to thank all of you for watching We'll see you in the next video.